G'day guys. Welcome back. Welcome to my kitchen. Now, most of you know, hopefully, that um, I do acrylic pouring and resin videos. I think I've done one cooking video when I made my caramel fudge, so forgive me if this is not a professional looking cooking video, but I wanted to share with you how I make my peanut brittle. Yum. I'm just going to do a little zoom of what I'm going to use and then I'm going to put you up onto the tripod. Right, so two packets of salted peanuts. I don't use the raw ones, I use the salted ones. A bowl for them to go into to sit into the oven to stay warm. So I'll do that in a minute. A big tray. This is what we're going to pour our peanut brittle into. This one's actually 90 centimetres. It's a big one. And this is the foil. Just covered it in two pieces of foil. There's one sheet there and then the other ones underneath overlapping. I've got my oven on. It's sitting at 120 degrees Celsius. So that's where the peanuts are gonna go to stay nice and warm. You don't wanna put cold peanuts into your mix. Right, now, this is important. We need a nice, excuse my paint on my fingers. We need a nice, thick, heavy saucepan. This used to be an old pressure cooker. So that's why it's only got one handle. It's very old. So that's it there. Get a nice, heavy-based pot. We have some sugar. You can use caster sugar. It's going to dissolve, so it doesn't matter. We have some caro, light corn syrup. Now, the way I made my recipe is one bottle of that, one packet of that. Like, I don't want to be using half a bottle of that and three quarters of a thing of that and I just did it easy for me. Um, some vanilla extract, some bicarb, soda and some butter. I've got it chopped up. It was cold so I've chopped it up. Now we are using one kilogram of sugar. This is 16 ounces or 473 mils of light corn syrup, not the dark one. I have got four teaspoons of bicarb soda and I sifted it just to get the lumps out, okay? I have got 175 grams of salted butter and then I'm gonna put in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And we are going to have one cup of water as well. The peanuts, two packets, 375 grams, okay? So I think I've told you everything. I'm gonna put you up on the tripod and we'll get started. Now, the other thing with making peanut brittle, there's two important things. You have to get everything ready first before you even start you know, melting sugar and things. You need to get everything ready. So as you saw, I chopped up my butter, sifted my bicarb, everything is ready. Now this is going to go into the oven because we want that to be nice and warm. Right, the next thing, we'll put the syrup in first. That way it'll kind of give the sugar something to sit on. We don't really want sugar crystals on the sides of this pot. So we will be cleaning the sides of the pot with, um, where'd my pastry brush go? With the pastry brush dipped in water. That's, <laughs> that's some resin tint. My bottle leaked. So yeah, just excuse that. <laughs> I was doing an, um, a resin pour and I was getting the red ink out and it spilt on me. So yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> All right, so I just find it's easier to put this in first. Now what I'm gonna do is, because I want all of that, I'm just gonna pop the lid on it and I'm gonna sit it upside down. Uh, where will I put it? Just over here. Just sitting it upside down for the rest of that to run out, if it will stay. Just lean it up against that. Right, so that's done. Now the next thing we need to do is pour in our sugar and just pour that into the center. Like I said, we want as little of the sugar to touch the edge as possible. 
So that's why we put down that syrup first. Right, so that's the sugar gone in. One cup of water. I've just used hot water from the sink just to help the melting process and I'm just going to run that along the edge. Again, trying to keep the sugar crystals away from the side. So there we go. One cup of water. Okay, so now you need a wooden spoon. I have got a few wooden spoons and I write sweet on this one because I don't want to be stirring this with something that I've previously made a curry with. So I put sweet on there. All right, so now we need to just get the last little bit of this corn syrup out. Look at that. You don't want to waste it. We'll give it a stir and we'll turn the heat on. We need to melt this really slowly. Okay, it's really important when you're making candy of any sort that your mixture does not come to the boil until your sugar has dissolved totally. Otherwise, it will crystallize. Okay, so I've got it on my big wok burner here. I'm going to turn it on and turn it down to low. I need a little flame there. Okay, so now basically all we're going to do is, like I said, we're just going to let this dissolve really, really slowly. I'm not going to video the whole thing because it's going to take quite a while for it to dissolve. That's what we need to do. And then once it's dissolved, uh, we can bring it up to a high heat and we'll boil it. Now, the other thing you need, apart from having everything ready before you start, is a candy thermometer. I guess some people make candy without this, but I find that I have to have this. And I'll talk to you about the temperatures a little bit later on. But for now, I'm just going to stand here and I'm going to slowly stir this until all my sugar has dissolved. And then I will be back. So now that uh, it's dissolving, but you can still see the sugar crystals on the side of the pot there. So this is where we get our boiling water and a little pastry brush. And we just wash all those little crystals away. You're going to have to do this a few times because, you, like I said, you don't want any sugar crystals in your mix before um, or when you're mix comes to the boil so before it starts boiling get all the crystals off the side like that and go over it again make sure that you've got them all keep stirring gently you don't want it to come to a boil before all that sugar has dissolved really really important okay don't rush this step otherwise you'll get crystallized and um, bit of brittle, and nobody wants that. Eh? Now, if you guys want to see me do more cooking, I always do my Christmas cooking this time of the year. We're in November, so Christmas is coming. Um, I've already done my caramel fudge recipe, which I've been making for years. This peanut brittle I've been making for years. I usually take it in to work and. Um, it just gets devoured by all my work colleagues. They just love it. So this will be going to them. And then I'll make another batch for my family and friends for Christmas. But um, I also do Rocky Road. I do caramel cashew popcorn, um, all kinds of goodies. So if you are interested in seeing how I make those as well, let me know. And uh, like I said, I'm not a professional cook. I'm certainly not a professional um, cooking video person. I'm doing my best. It's much more difficult, I think, being in the kitchen rather than just standing at a table with the camera, you know, overhead. This is more difficult. I have to think, okay, now where do I have to move the camera? <laughs> uh, all right, so there we go. Now, I'm just going to give it a bit of a stir. I'll wipe down the sides again. Now, if you want to see if there's any crystals left in your mix, 
just be really careful take a little bit rub it between your fingers and it's hot so be careful I can still feel a tiny little bit of crystal in fact there's a little bit of crystals on my spoon so I'm going to actually rinse that because I don't want those crystals getting back in because um, crystals sugar crystals stick to other sugar crystals and they make more sugar crystals so I'm just going to rinse this under boiling water that way um, I'll get rid of all of those crystals so this is starting to boil so as soon as it starts to boil take your spoon out you cannot stir this again until a bit later on okay so it's starting to boil I'm going to turn up my heat we're on a low so I'm going to go to high there we go turn that up and now we just have to wait put this down I will need it again so here's our candy thermometer it's got this little hook on the back here that you can hook well I hook over the pan there now I want this to come to 145 degrees it's 130 140 150 so I want it to be halfway between soft crack and hard crack so that would be 290 Fahrenheit about that okay so 145 130 140 is about there opposite is 290 so we're just going to put that on here it's got little feet on the bottom so that the um, thermometer actually doesn't you know touch the bottom I'm just going to lift it up a tiny bit more get it off the bottom of the pan and you can see how it's sort of going clear now it was kind of a milky color but it's gone clear now so all we have to do now is wait wait until it gets to 145 degrees shouldn't get too close should I it's a bit hard to see through the steam there we go you can see we're up to 110 so um, I'll be back when we're a little bit closer to the 145 degree mark righto we're on about 142 two there's 130 soft cracks 140 so we're getting up that way so almost at 145 so we're going to pop in our butter like so and i'm going to put my little oven glove on and i'm going to get the peanuts out of the oven turn that off and then there we go pour in all our nice warm peanuts so obviously we, you know, we've just waited to get it up to um, 145 degrees we don't want to put cold peanuts in there so this is where we need to stir now so remember I said you don't stir while you're bringing it up to temperature but then once you add the peanuts and your butter then you need to keep stirring it otherwise the peanuts will catch on the bottom and they will burn and then you'll get this awful burnt flavored peanut brittle and yeah it'll just be a waste so be careful so now because I've just added these the temperature is going to drop again so try not to when you're stirring try not to like you know do this and get lots of cold air in there you want to try and keep your spoon under under the surface I guess keep it moving slowly though so we just need to do this now keep stirring until we come back up to 145 degrees because it's dropped now it's sitting on it's there it's about 280 Fahrenheit so we want that to come back up again to about 290 Fahrenheit probably just over 290 uh, so back up to 145 degrees Celsius 
So this is going to take a little while again now because it's all cooled down because we put the nuts and the butter in. So once it gets back up to the 145 degrees, that's when we add our vanilla extract and our bicarb. And that's what will make it just puff up and it'll go pale and puffy and all aerated, kind of like honeycomb. Yum. So that's what we're going to do. And then after, when that happens, I have to work really, really fast. I have to get this from here over onto the other bench. So I'll just have to pick up the tripod and zoom it over behind us. Unless someone can jump out and help me. <laughs> that would be amazing if you could help me. So basically just going to keep stirring this now. Make sure that you don't get your peanuts stuck anywhere. You may have to sort of move the um, thermometer just so that you can get underneath in case there's any nuts under there because they will stick as well so and make sure that you've got a nice this is a silicone mitt <laughs> that I'm holding on to on holding my pot with because you know it's hot the other thing really important don't make candy on a wet rainy day and look it's Queensland, it's the wet season, it's drizzling outside, the humidity is not too, too bad, it's about 80% at the moment, but I have shut all the doors and windows and I've got my air conditioner on. So if, if you're in a humid area or you've got a really humid day, it probably won't work very well because um, sugar is, I think the word's hydrographic or something like that which means it absorbs moisture from the air and it gets sticky. You know if you've had a candy and you've left it out on the bench and then you come back and it's all sticky? Yeah, it does that. So for best results, try not to make any sort of candy, including pin-up riddle, on a humid day. But um, yeah, it's just how it's going to be from now on till probably March next year and I need to make peanut brittle for Christmas so that's why I've got my air conditioner on so you can see the it's changing it's getting much sort of thicker and bubblier so we're almost we're almost back to our temperature of 145 now don't look down on the thermometer like that get down at the same height as the lines and look across at your thermometer okay all right here we go guys we're ready we're 145. Now I'm going to act really quickly. I'm just going to put in my two teaspoons of vanilla. One, two. Don't even worry about the lid. Here goes the bicarb. And I'm going to get my, I'm going to turn that off. And we're going to give this a mix. Now don't over mix. I'm just going to mix until it all kind of goes white like that. Don't over mix. Right, I'm going to move you over here for a minute like so. Now I have to get my pot. Bear with me. Bear with me. All right. I'm going to give it one last little stir because all the peanuts are going to be down the bottom. And I'm going to pour that out. Oh gosh. So you've got to act really quickly there. Sorry if you can't see. Now I'm going to pop this in the... I'm just going to pop it back over here. Now with peanut brittle, try, try not to like level the surface with your spoon because you're going to break your bubbles. And you don't want to break your bubbles. <laughs> you want it to be nice and aerated. So just tilt. Hopefully, I've done okay. Seems I was really rushed there at the, at the last minute. It, you know, you it really you have to really work fast. So, oh, phew, all right. Don't worry too much if you haven't gone into into your corners, okay? Because you'd rather have it um, nice and aerated than 
put a wooden spoon over it and try and level it because all it's going to do is break your bubbles so just leave it I know it's very tempting because it's kind of thicker in the middle and it's kind of thinner on the side but trust me just leave it alone and let it do its thing look at that <laughs> ah, it's crunchy already it cools pretty quickly all right I think I've done okay you guys considering you were all watching me and I had to hurry little tiny bit of maybe burnt there um, yeah I've never done done this in front of anyone before so you know I usually just take my time and I do my thing but then when everyone's watching you think oh god I'm gonna get it done quickly but um, yeah it's a beautiful color you just got to act really quickly you know when it gets to that 145 back up to 145 stir everything in and um, tip it out right I will be back once this has had a chance to cool down look at all those bubbles look at that we're getting a very good color here are we that's better on the other side look at all those bubbly goodnesses so that's what you want you want all those bubbles to be kept in your peanut brittle like I said it's really really tempting to get the spoon out and level it all but don't it doesn't matter if the middle's thicker than the edges you're better off having a really light crispy beautiful peanut brittle the last thing you want is a, a really alrighty it's ready it's nice and cold so um, yeah now is the time this is the best part hey get it out look at that oh that's pretty heavy look at that <gasps> look at that wow is that amazing right let's do a karate chop <laughs> oh. this is the fun part just breaking it into pieces okay and you can do this however you want to sort of breaking it into bigger pieces and then into smaller bits oh, look at that let's have a little close-up here hey look at that isn't that amazing oh, it doesn't know what to focus on look at all the little holes in there it's all that gorgeous airiness And it breaks pretty easily this is the middle so it's a bit thicker in the middle because I didn't level it that's the back so just break it like this into bits should we taste a piece mm. Mm. yum oops <laughs> I dropped it it's not rock hard as you can see it's nice and light and airy so breaks really easily so it's just a matter of breaking it up and um, storing it in an airtight container. Still chewing. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Love it. So you can put it, depending on what size, I think probably about that sort of size, I think is, is nice. If people want to come back and have seconds, they can. But I don't like to make them too big. Sort of bite sized pieces. Mm. That one's for me. Mmm, <laughs> that turned out so well. Right, if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask them in the comments down below. I will try and answer everybody. It makes a lot of peanut brittle, it really does. Mm. I'm so hungry. I'm going to eat this corner as well. Mm. Crunch, crunch. So I've got almost got a container full, and I've still got all of this to break up. So I'm going to do that. My dogs absolutely love peanut brittle, <laughs> so I have to share it with them too. Another container. 
Mm, mm, mm. You guys have no idea how good this stuff is. Seriously. I know it's a little bit of work, but homemade candy is a little bit of work. But it's worth the trouble. It's always nicer than the shop bought stuff. What's the edge? It's a little bit thinner. So if you prefer a thinner, crispier bit, go for the edges. Oh, there's another size. That's another little one for me. Oh, mm, mm. But just basically break it all up. I'll save these little end bits for my dogs because they love it. Basically, this is all you do. Break it up into sizes that you want. Now, with the very edge, sometimes there's not a lot of nuts in that very edge there. And, um, no, well, there's a nut there though. But there's usually not as many nuts in the very edge, so you might want to just break that off. It depends how picky you want to be about it. See, I'll break that off because there's not really much in the way of the nuts there. So I'll actually break that little bit off and the dogs will have that. So there's a lot of peanut brittle. All right, so, oh gosh, look, I've still got more. I've still got these two containers. And I've still got more to do. All right, let's finish it off, hey? Nice little bite-sized pieces. And just remember, store it in an airtight container. Um, I wouldn't put it in the fridge, just leave it leave it in a nice cool place. And um, it'll store for mm, at least a week. Don't put it in one of those snap lock plastic bags. Um, it, it doesn't stay as airtight. It needs to be really airtight, otherwise, like I said earlier, the um, bit of moisture from the air will get in. And it will make it just go kind of sticky. So be careful how you store it. I'm nearly there, you guys. Look, I'm nearly there. Nearly there. All right. Oh, there's a bit for me. All right. <laughs> I'm going to clean up this mess that I made. But look at all that. Oh, it's so heavy. Nice, huge amounts of peanut brittle. I'm going to eat that one too. I'm going to eat these right now. <laughs> I shouldn't, but I will. All right. Thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you've really enjoyed my video and uh, let me know if you want to see any other videos. Pin up, um, what am I doing next? Rocky Roads next. All right. Thanks for watching. Love you all. Take care. Bye for now. I can't turn the camera off. My fingers are dirty.